Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi everyone, welcome back again to online NPTEL course on structure, form and architecture, the synergy. Today we are at lecture number 31 and as I uh, told in my last lecture that now we will be discussing some structure and architectural form for different uh, purposes. And we will start with uh, this particular topic with the structural form and architecture in windy area. So, without any further delay, let us get started. So, at beginning if I just uh, ask you what is wind, what do you understand by wind? So, wind is basically the bulk of air, but definitely we call it wind when it is in motion. So, in this first slide, if you can uh, see uh, one GIF image is showing what exactly the phenomena. So, we can feel it we can measure it the intensity. So, when there is a blow of wind, uh, blow of air, so that we refer to the wind. Now, why this particular motion being created? It is again a very simple thing and I think all of us uh, have read this kind of definition or explanation in our school days. So, the wind flow is developed due to change in temperature. So, whenever due to the sun uh, your land is getting uh, the heat and then uh, the you know the air in contact to the ground at that lower level also get the heat and become lighter. So, hot air will goes up and that will create empty space and in order to occupy that empty space the cold wind from the surrounding will take a motion towards that. So, here you can see the same due to the sun, then the warm air is basically you know the surface in the you know lower surface whatever the air present. So, they uh, get warm and then they create a low pressure zone and the tendency from high pressure to low pressure movement. So, cool air will come to this and that will create this particular wind. Now, each day we feel this wind and if we do not uh, feel it, so we feel very much uh, stuffy. Okay. But normally uh, before any storm or something we feel this cool air. So, up to certain level, up to certain velocity of wind, we uh, like the wind blow, we enjoy the wind blow. But when the intensity will um, getting intensified, then probably that will be a threat to us. Yes, so that will be threat to our building. So, we should know the different phenomena that will occur during this heavy wind blow and how we can really design uh, our building structurally safe and also uh, can resist this kind of wind pressure in case of the emergency. Coming to the types uh, of wind. So, it is again broadly classified into three category. One is your prevailing wind, another one is your seasonal wind and then local winds. So, prevailing winds is basically uh, around the clock over the years. So, uh, there is a specific uh, direction and very predominant direction that most of the cases it is blowing from this side to this side maybe from south uh, southeast uh, from it generates from southeast direction and move through like this so this is the prevailing wind direction and based on prevailing wind direction also you know for a region definitely it will based on the region it is not uniform for uh, each and every space so for a region it will be uh, predictable it is uh, actually you know similar over the time and uh, we taking this prevailing wind, we can also uh, place our building and we can orient our building. In the second category, the seasonal wind, 
it is something which subject to change when there is change in weather. Say if it is winter, so there is certain uh, uh, temperature, maximum temperature, minimum temperature. If it is uh, summer, then there will be a maximum temperature and minimum temperature. And because of this temperature difference and all, the wind pattern also may change. So, that is the seasonal variation and the seasonal wind. So, uh, during this uh, summer uh, evening, uh, mostly if you consider the uh, you know southeast part or the east part of India. So, this kind of uh, situation may generate, especially in the summer evening. So, we expect some storm, uh, heavy storm or that may also lead to the thunderstorm like this. Now, local wind is basically produced uh, due to the local variability in temperature and pressure condition. So, it is similar to uh, the case where you have a, a region where you have water body, you have you know um, the paved uh, uh, surfaces. So, where it will absorb the heat very quickly and the air in contact of that surface will get the heat and get warm and then uh, that will create a low pressure zone. So, this is very much uh, temporal, very much local in nature where this wind blow from you know uh, from your uh, cool region to the hot region the wind blows that may occur. This may occur in two different way. See you have uh, a land, you have some buildings here and then you have some water body. And it is considered a sunny day. So, then definitely with this heat from the sun will make this uh, surfaces, building surfaces and the uh, adjacent atmosphere very hot. So, the air will get the heat and then go up and form this river which is little bit uh, um, you know bad conductor of heat and it is not that much warm compared to the land. So, wind will blow from this direction. Okay. Now, consider the same situation at night, the same location, but now you have night situation. So, consider this is the star and all. Uh, so, this surface uh, may be concrete or any hard surface, it will get warmer very quickly at the same time it will get colder very quickly compared to the land. So, that time uh, the temperature of this particular region near this you know water body or sea it is basically warmer than this place. So, we get warm air in this part compared to this and then the movement of wind will then form the land to the water. So, it is basically depending on the topography, depending on uh, the position like whether it will be uh, near to the water body or maybe sometimes it may be uh, near to the hill. So, uh, based on that this can change. So, whenever there is a change in temperature and it has relation with the pressure as well. So, then uh, low pressure, high pressure will be created. So, when temperature increases then definitely that will create to the low pressure uh, area and then from high pressure to low pressure there will be movement. Now, here it is basically self explaining, uh, explaining the you know the you know scale of this kind of storm. So, when it is a very mild very uh, you know uh, low speed wind. So, we prefer to enjoy that, but when it is of a magnificent scale, then probably you will get this kind of hurricane, this kind of tornado and maybe the sandstone which will be very much vulnerable and threatening to us. So, type of storm, hail storm we can have in, uh, normally in the cold region we can get this, then thunderstorm we all are uh, uh, you know knowing this particular storm. Okay, the heavy storm with the rain and also the lightning 
then the sandstorm, then ice storm, tornado, then you also have heavy snow or blizzard, then Dereco storm is again a vulnerable form of this storm, then the tropical storm normally being observed in the tropical area and the hurricane. So, here you can see that how devastating this could be if it passes through a uh, urban area. Mo many settlement, many people will be in threat uh, to encounter that and uh, the consequences are something like this. I have taken very few uh, examples where like the buildings and the other property got damaged due to this heavy wind blow. So, here you can see that uh, upliftment of this is basically uh, upliftment of this car and even if you see the condition of the roof, it is uh, actually very badly damaged. This is another one where uh, not only your building, the surrounding trees will be in a very much uh, threatened, uh, very much threatened and they may also affect your building subsequently. Coming to this example again, this is uh, the turning of the building where you can see that the whole building though it is very light and temporary shaded, but due to the wind blow. So, it just uh, you know change. So, normally uh, whenever you have this breach roof and all. So, it depends on how wind is you know um, coming that wind direction will depend uh, like direct that what will be the change, what will be the change in the position of the structure. So, in this case it is prevailing uh, like it is expected the wind is coming from the that direction and as because the structure is not well anchored to the foundation as because it is a temporary uh, setup uh, maybe uh, for like uh, some settlement and then if it is not properly anchored. So, this will create a thrust to it and then it will basically tilt. So, this is the result of the same. Uh, looking at this example, this is uh, where the portion of the building is totally uh, blown away by the wind and you can see some of the debris is here. So, it is very badly affected. So, it may happen when you have some uh, material uh, that is not um, uh, that much strong to resist the load or maybe the intensity of the wind is so much that uh, it failed to resist. Coming to the damage of uh, building or any property due to speedy wind or heavy wind. So, we can have a catastrophic failure, catastrophic failure means it is a total failure, the dimension, the magnitude of this failure is very large where the foundation uh, failure is something where if your building is uh, like a tilted structure and these joints are not that much strong or this foundation is not anchored with the you know footing, these legs are not anchored with the footing. So, due to heavy wind, uh, it may really fail this particular foundation. So, these we have seen uh, in other cases. In case of steel frame, though it will have a better resistance again that lateral load, but sometimes uh, when you use the glass or some other cladding to the steel frame that may get badly affected uh, for this and especially the roof, if you just think of the gavel roof or the peach roof where normally this you know hurricane and other thing are very much uh, predominant. So, then that will create uh, thrust that will create suction and then this particular roof will be blown away. So, up uplifting of of the roof is one of the major problems. Then in case of the machinery houses, if the wall thickness is good enough, then the uh, magnitude of the damage may be uh, some somewhat low, but if it is uh, something where you have some old structure and it is not uh, being maintained. So, then um, maybe the disaster will be more. Then for the timber houses is very light structure normally sometimes we prefer to build it for just uh, make the temporary structure or maybe where we cannot really resist uh, the heavy 
wind and we just allow, we just use the basement in the areas where this hurricane and tornado are uh, expected that we uh, make the structure in such a manner that okay, during that storm, uh, the heavy storm, then we just um, take ourselves to the basement and we allow wind to blow uh, above ground and that may damage as we have seen in the pictures. Coming to the reinforced concrete frames, so in this case reinforced uh, RCC frames will also have if their joints are not properly made, so that may get affected or else uh, in, in case of like uh, RCC frame whatever the wall we will use if we use uh, very poor joints or maybe the thickness is very uh, blaze uh, for the external wall then probably damage the magnitude of the damage will be more. Compared to the uh, catastrophic failure also sometimes it may not be a total failure, but there are some component failure. One is your roof sheeting. So, uh, normally in the village area uh, due to heavy wind, so this particular roof sheeting whatever it is made of asbestos or tin. So, they will really create a pressure here and then uh, if the other part of the building is also have some opening then that will create a negative drag and this dragging will leave this particular uh, roofing and then it will blow away. Instead of roof seating sometimes we also use roof tiles with, uh, with the help of the raptors and the frame and that may also uh, fall into this category. And it has been observed if we reduce the slope, if we want to make it very flat, uh, then that will be most um, more preferred than a very wide angle because then the upliftment will be really more. Then door windows definitely if it is uh, facing the wind direction, suppose this is your building and then here you have your window position and then maybe there is a door and your if wind is blowing like this. So, sometimes this may get badly affected because with storm that may also carry some other debris from uh, like we have seen in case of the tornado in many instances. You can also browse through internet to see this kind of devastating effect. So, that may damage the uh, windows and doors. Coming to the walls definitely if the thickness of the wall is not adequate or it is not properly done with the proper material and the joinery, so that may easily collapse. Then the cladding whenever uh, you know with the base surface we use for the stone cladding or some terracotta tiling um, you know cladding then with this wind pressure it will also uh, peel off. So, many buildings you might have seen in the corners like uh, if it is properly cladded with the stone and then all of a sudden you find that the portion that tiles they just are blown away with the wind and normally at the corner it happened more. Now, coming to the effect now whatever we have discussed now let us uh, understand with these images what I have picked up from a uh, document of your uh, nidm.government.in. So, in this case uh, if your house is not properly connected to the footing, so it is not having a proper foundation is just uh, some way managed, then it will really turn this building. So, this building can totally turn off and that we have seen in this case. I have shown you this uh, figure. So, this is one example of this where the building is not anchored with the foundation. Coming to the second category where foundation is not the problem, but roofing materials are not anchored properly to the building. So, normally for this kind of each roof building we have a series of raptor and then on top of it we just anchor it. Now, if this anchoring is not properly done then this kind of upliftment, okay, lifting of roof may occur. Now, 
on contrast sometimes if wind pressure is not that much to uplift the main structure, but you have some projection like this veranda. So, then it may also uplift the roof of this veranda or maybe the tiling or something like this. If it is not of that magnitude, it can damage the small projection and also we have to as a uh, as a suggestion like what we need to do this projection to be taken care of and uh, we do not provide such without proper anchoring with the main structure. Now, this problem with the wind is one and when it will be a thunderstorm. So, along with uh, a um, uh, heavy wind and the rain and if it will continue for certain time. So, that will also aggravate the damages. So, first of all this wind will make this structure a uh, little bit shaky and then there will be some problem of this uplifting of the roof. At the same time with the heavy rain that will be water lock, then if the building material is not that much waterproof and all. So, that will become weaker and then the total building may collapse. So, damage will be more if it is water lock situation, heavy storm and along with heavy rain. Coming to the speedy wind as we have seen that in this case as well like uh, when you have a continuous roof for the veranda. So, this will create a void and then if the wind direction is from this side. So, that will have uh, a really create a pressure at the bottom of the roof and that will really uh, flipped. So, this is not really recommended, but at the same time if we just split the main roof and the other roof which is separated and which is not properly anchored to the main structure uh, with proper uh, you know joist and all. So, that may also lead to the uplifting, uplifting of the roof of this veranda. So, this projection whenever we provide the projection we have to really take care of that. So, that is why the overhangs and the Peshu and Varandas experience high wind pressure as because it is directly exposed to the wind and because of this void it will create this pressure. Now, coming to the wind load to a building. So, when we consider when we design a building or decide upon a shape size of a building and even the structural design we should take care of few points. And it start with the aerodynamics of flow around the building like definitely it will depend on the shape of the building in its plan and elevation both we will come to that again. The second point is windward vertical faces being subjected to the pressure. So, windward means in your building there is a prevailing wind direction. So, if wind is coming from this direction so this is called windward okay, face and that is the opposite to that is basically your leeward. So, whenever uh, wind is uh, you know wind is blowing from this direction and it will come into contact to the surface the first surface. So, it will create some pressure try to deform it at the back side and then whenever it getting some slope. So, it will try to move uh, up and with this due to this obstruction in this particular space it create some suction effect. So, that is why the lateral uh, the uh, you know lead one and lateral phase getting the suction effect and the vertical one is getting uh, your um, uh, windward vertical face is getting your main pressure. So, that we need to take care of that if intensity is more. So, this will create the problem. So, that may damage the building in different way. Now, in compare to that if you have a building uh, something like this where the openings are parallel and wind can easily pass through and the openings are quite big enough. So, that will uh, be little bit in a better situation, but that may also lead to create suction at this roof and this roofed upliftment may occur. The sloping roof uh, getting pressure 
or suction effect depending on the slope that already I mentioned. If we have very uh, you know the angle is more and then you can get this suction effect. And again along with the main structure what we also need to look for the projection of window shades and other roof projection in veranda. So, that we need to take care. Now, coming to the basic building shape. So, what exactly it is happening? If we have a circular one and this is your prevailing wind direction. So, due to this curvature wind is taking the surface and there is no such uh, negative pressure or suction being created at the opponent. So, this is uh, one of the preferred uh, shape that we can go for the windy area. Now, whereas, if you have a squarish uh, uh, plan, then also it will create some kind of suction, it will uh, create some pressure and that may prone to the vulnerability. But now, if we know that circle is a better than this or circular form is better than this rectangle, rectilinear form, then why we are not going for this kind of solution as because most of the buildings we see, so they, they are all of this rectangular form. The reason is uh, with the rectangular very uh, you know com the composition of walls with right angle will provide us to utilize the space in a better way even the furniture's layout will be easier and then we can uh, better optimize it Where, whereas if you only have the circle then uh, you know the division of the internal space will be little bit challenging. But if square is the plan then up to that level it is still ok, but in reality what we found that is composition of different uh, um, you know rect rectangle and then we will get a zigzag form. So, in this uh, irregular form of this rectil rectilinear uh, composition will create some more pressure. So, sometimes they create more pressure here and all. So, this type of building are more vulnerable to get affected. So, what we uh, can understand from this, if we want to make our structure very simple, very uh, simple geometry, regular geometry, preferably with a curve or all. So, that may be helpful for this. Now, coming to uh, coming to the other wind effect of the building. So, this is considered to be the best out of the given option and whenever we elongate this site. So, that will be uh, more risky and when it is like this. So, then it will be even more risky depending on the wind direction and if we have this L shape or sometimes maybe the shape is something irregular. So, that may create some problem. So, due to uh, the unequal uh, sharing of the lateral load due to the wind to the different components will create the problem. Coming to uh, that was for a single building, single building unit. Now, if you consider the placing of multiple building, if you place building in a very regular form and the wind direction is something uh, from this side. So, that will create a tunnel effect okay, which is sometimes not welcoming. So, that will if uh, uh, we have uh, this arrangement something like this from uh, high pressure to low pressure. So, wind can really create problem for this region. Whereas, irregular zigzag planning avoids the wind. So, prevailing wind may be from this direction. So, then they will not gaze, get that particular route to get intensified. So, this is sometimes preferred. So, instead of your row planning, okay. so this is uh, not uh, uh, preferred for this and then you have to make this zigzag whatever to break the wind pattern or something. So, that will reduce the intensity. So, normally in R 1 area that is why uh, we get this kind of you know uh, situation where different alignment will not allow wind to really uh, take the intensity. Whereas, in uh, you must have seen in a you know countryside or maybe in the case of uh, western um, 
example western country example. So, you have a field agriculture field and then you have some settlement and then when wind is coming from this direction it is getting the strength and definitely it is more devastating. Even the recent times in India few of such uh, cyclone that uh, has come. So, definitely when it is moving through the empty uh, area or over the sea. So, uh, the intensity is quite high from you know when it is created and this basically very much devastating, but when it enters when it hit the land and then penetrate to different uh, you know buildings and also it is getting it is losing its power and that is why like in urban area this kind of pattern is uh, preferable. Now, coming to the tall buildings that we have discussed this previously when we discuss uh, about different uh, you know effect of wind and as because with the height increase in height this particular sway lateral sway is actually very much high and that is why like you can feel the building is sway like this. And if we do not add up such a um, high rise structure component then probably this uh, will be a catastrophe. So, we cannot really increase the height of the building and that is why like when we will be discussing uh, maybe in upcoming lectures on uh, high rise structure we will touch this again where we will uh, say the different kind of core structure, different kind of tube structure that will help to make this high rise to protect against this lateral load especially with the wind. For them definitely earthquake will play a different role to that, but along with that with the increase in height wind is one of the major factor to be considered for high rise uh, building design. So, here like uh, this phenomena is there. Now, coming to the wind effect uh, and different options. Uh, so, if we uh, see this then wind uh, direction is from this side and then um, basically uh, it can enter through this particular space and then it will create suction to uplift the roof and also uh, if we have another opening it can go outside. But if it is restricted by a vertical wall or what uh, we have mentioned there that is the wind vault wall vertical wall. So, that will try to bend and then it will collapse. Coming to this option as I mentioned that there is no suction being created as because wind can easily pass. So, this is uh, very important to know that if we want to stop the wind it will create problem uh, in more ok, more problem will be created. So, it is better if we can pass allow our uh, wind to pass with a design um, then it will be safe. Now, if uh, in this case like wind is being obstructed like in this case this wall is very weak, uh, but um, uh, the foundation is strong that is why it can get a deformation, but in this case uh, the whole joints like different joints from your foundation and then your roof to the wall is very weak and then that will have a total collapse. Coming to the other uh, portions where like you will get uh, this particular wind pressure in this direction and there is a pressure difference from inside outside. So, that will create a suction and then basically this overturning may occur. So, uh, if wind is coming from this direction, so your building is supposed to tilt like this. So, something like this the overturning will take place where if you have rigid connection but if there is some some kind of poor joint so first your roof will be blown away and then uh, there will be damage to the wall as well coming to the wind effect minimization so in this case where you can just expose your buildings direct to the wind or else sometimes you can create a buffer or we can provide a shield with some uh, tree which is very strong to you know resist against the wind. So, that can also reduce the pressure uh, and the damage will be less. Now, uh, based on this we understand that ok the form regular form that we want the basic shape should be uh, very much you know squarish or maybe circular if possible 
and again with the height we have to really think of uh, the aerodynamics and then we can uh, you know make design for stall structure with such structural system which can resist uh, the um, lateral load due to the wind. So, here uh, I have just listed few types of uh, structural form uh, pertaining to the hurricane resistance structure, spiral wind resistance structure, dome shape structure is another good uh, structural form that will do very good with the aerodynamic property. Then pyramid shape structure and the egg shape structure. So, here I will have picked up one one example and uh, again like uh, my previous lectures as I mentioned that you should also search for more example under this category and we will exchange the idea. So, that will be clear about what exactly the structure and for what it is. So, this is for the hurricane resistance structure and uh, this is again a dome shape. So, it will really give a uh, you know 360 degree wind for wherever the prevailing direction. So, that can pass through, but more importantly this component. So, this puncture has been created where like if wind can pass through. So, that will not really create the negative uh, drag uh, pressure or the drag effect uh, at the backward portion of the opposite to the wind direction like it is uh, compared to the leeward uh, facet of the building. So, here it is circular. So, this can be used or instead of that we can have a, a roof something like this which is tilted. So, wind can pass through and this particular roof can also help to wind to easily pass on, on this surface. Coming to the spiral wind resistance where it is basically the tornado. In this picture we have seen that it started with this and then it is basically making a spiral and it is uh, aggravated. So, taking this shape uh, the aerodynamic shape can be um, taken up. So, there is a building of your uh, uh, in this case this is the Sangai tower. So, there uh, this particular philosophy has been taken to that minimize this particular wind load with this shape. So, that may really um, you know reduce the damage and can protect the building from the uh, lateral force. Coming to the dome shape, it is always uh, preferred for the windy area where you can have this kind of movement where the wind from this direction can easily pass through and that will uh, not create much thrust on the structure. So, this is uh, one of the form architectural form that we can apply for the area where wind is a problem and we can have a heavy wind especially in the coastal region or something somewhere it occasionally not um, every time or not throughout the year may be a particular time where uh, we can expect this hurricane or tornado. So, this kind of structure may also help. Coming to the pyramid shape again uh, as because the wind is increasing uh, the pressure is increasing with the height. So, if you reduce the mass at the top and then uh, we just create this particular pyramid shape structure. So, wherever wind will uh, you know contact this particular uh, aligned surface. So, that will lift up and it will act like a mountain. So, then that will not really create uh, the problem with a plane surface. So, this is important uh, parameter. So, where pyramid shape structural form can also be used. Coming to the egg shape formed, so again it is a um, variant of the dome shape. So, where also taking this, so this is basically London City Hall, you can see the London Bridge here and then in this form uh, this particular water body. So, whatever the wind will come, so that will take this particular aerodynamic shape. And to explain the aerodynamic shape, it is basically uh, if you see that uh, you know the profile of a plane. So, uh, basically the cockpit of the aeroplane. So, this is basically making this particular uh, safe of uh, with a curve uh, where like it can easily drag through. So, that uh, will not create much thrust on this surface. So, taking this similar concept of this linear you know the propeller and 
then this curvature. So, this kind of egg shaped uh, oval shape or the domical structure is preferred in windy area. Now, coming to the end of this lecture, what we understand from this discussion that yes, wind with a uh, certain acceptable intensity or the velocity uh, that is enjoyable uh, that will also help us for the better ventilation, but when it is uh, beyond certain limit it will be threat to the human settlement and for that definitely depending on the structural form, structural elevation, structural arrangement it will affect uh, like it will decide the damage uh, magnitude and for that definitely it is preferred to have a plan like circle uh, where you do not have uh, that much negative pressure being created. If not try to make building symmetrical uh, no, or squarish form not really very irregular or zigzag pattern that may more prone to the vulnerable situation with uh, the heavy load. In case of the elevation uh, it is preferred to have a uh, you know aerodynamic shape. So, it may be uh, domical semicircular shape or it may be egg shaped depending on the prevailing wind direction. So, this may done and whenever we consider is for the high rise structure and we will discuss that in detail. So, then along with your regular member. So, what uh, we need to add some diagonal bracing which will make the structure more uh, adding more steepness and then that will also resist again the lateral load created by the wind. And we have seen some of the examples of or the building form uh, which we can apply for different purposes or make that uh, you know resistant against the hurricane again the spiral wind uh, resistance structure that we have seen in the Shanghai tower. And then uh, few uh, things we have to remember that is uh, you have to maintain the good anchoring of all the structural components especially for the pitch roof, uh, roof to wall, wall to foundation that anchoring should be proper. Then they are not uh, and then the projection, projection we have to take care if there is a projection okay, which is not properly. Uh, designed or not properly anchored. So, that may create some problem and then again uh, the material that we select uh, that also depends uh, like that also uh, will determine that how devastating the uh, outcome will be with the blow of wind high speed wind. So, the proper material to be taken whether it is RCC or whether it is uh, a steel frame. So, that cladding should be done in a proper manner. Um, with that we can make our um, building structure um, more resistant against the wind uh, uh, like as much as possible. And also what we have seen in normally wherever you have the uh, plain land or you know empty land the wind can easily get the uh, intensity, but whereas in zigzag pattern of a building in a very close urban area. So, wind will not really get the path and then uh, it is um, uh, will not really zigzag pattern will not really allow wind to increase the pressure and then where is uh, a row pattern is basically uh, increases the wind and it, it, it creates the tunnel effect. So, these are something where the individual level or at the arrangement of the building level we can think of and we uh, definitely uh, should follow some guidelines already available in Indian standard uh, or maybe other guidelines which are available. So, what I suggest that um, uh, with this basic information you just go through the link and there are few guidelines provided by uh, you know, different uh, you know state level. Uh, government register uh, uh, you know risk reduction department they have uh, published some of the reports and then uh, from those reports guidelines definitely we all will get benefited and we can apply that uh, knowledge wherever we 
uh, will design something for an area uh, where the wind is definitely a issue. Not even if it is not for throughout the year, maybe uh, in particular season, maybe in between summer and uh, your rainy season. So, with that I uh, conclude this lecture and like this we will be continuing uh, with uh, the next topic that is your structure and architecture form in seismic area where the earthquake will be taken as the uh, parameter and then how like uh, what are the effects of the earthquake and then how we can make our structure earthquake resistance for a normal structure, low, low height structure as well as the tall buildings. And to be specific uh, to the tall buildings, we will have different uh, discussion, we will have some lectures which is upcoming where we will discuss uh, about different high rise structural system. There we will also touch upon uh, the advantages and disadvantages, but preliminary in the next lecture, uh, we will focus on the seismic uh, effect on the building design, building form. And these are the study material and also not restrict to this uh, two reference, uh, I have given the link uh, where from I have collected some information. You can always browse through that to get more uh, to that and you can get some more insight from those document. So, with that I uh, would like to thank you to take part in this course and we will be waiting for you for the next lecture. Thank you very much.